This camera's kind of hard to see. It's black, and so is just about everything else in this studio. Welcome back, everyone. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about the Fujifilm X-Pro3. Now, back in October, when I was in New York City for Photo Plus, Fujifilm were gracious enough to invite me over to a studio that they had rented out, and I got to do initial impressions, kind of hands-on video that was able to coincide for the release for you guys, and they finally got some review units available, so they sent me one, and I'm working on that this next week, and I thought it'd be fun to do a little preliminary video here, uh, because when I typically have a new Fujifilm camera, there's a way that I like to set it up, and I wanted to share some of that with you today. Out of the box, it comes set up a certain way, and I think you can get a little more out of it if you know how to modify a few things, and so I wanna talk about that. But real quick, I wanna give a shout out to our sponsor today, who are the awesome folks over at Squarespace.com. Squarespace is an all-in-one solution for building beautiful websites, portfolios, or even an online store. They have a awesome drag-and-drop interface. You can build websites without having to write a single line of code. Squarespace now also features Calendar integration so if you want to do scheduling with clients let's say this is now super easy and a major lifesaver so head over to Squarespace do the free trial and see if Squarespace is right for you if it is I can save you an additional 10% off your order by using offer code AOP on checkout that offer code once again is AOP and I want to give a special thanks and shout out to the folks at Squarespace for sponsoring another episode of the art of photography so one thing we're not going to talk about in this video is this feature yes this is a flip down screen and when the camera on you have to flip it down to use it as a viewfinder or a monitor and yes it does not work for shooting self video or selfies it shoots one way and when it's closed you don't see it at all you get what they call a sub monitor now when I talked about this in my hands-on video I actually kind of like this setup a lot of people don't but this is a subjective feature this is not really something that makes the camera any better it's something that is going to be something that maybe I like maybe you don't it's why we call it subjective there are some new features in this camera that I think make it actually quite exceptional. First of all, you have the X-Trans 4 and X-Trans 4 processor that are brought over. It's the same ones that you find in the X-T3. So now you're bringing that image quality over to the X-Pro3, which give it a considerable upgrade. There is also a new film simulation, the Classic Negative. And I accidentally called it something else in my preview video. And thanks to many people who let me know that I was completely wrong. Yes, I do make mistakes. But anyway, if you like to shoot JPEG in camera, it's a great film simulation. It looks really good in Lightroom and also in Capture One if you are shooting raw and you want to apply that in post. It has a really cool look to it. Very vintage, very film negative C41-ish. Another function that I find extremely useful is the AF range limiter function. Now this is something that is borrowed from the DSLR world when you see really long sports lenses. So like 400 millimeter, 600 millimeter. Oftentimes these lenses will have switches on the side that allow you to limit the range of autofocus. So for instance, what you don't want is the autofocus to focus on something that's close up when you are focusing far away you want to stay locked on so you can give it a definition and usually these are predetermined on these lenses as to like six feet to infinity or something like that this is now in camera on the X Pro 3 and this is actually a very useful feature there's a technique that I've talked a lot about in these videos called sub framing where you're actually going to shoot through something to add a little bit of framing into your composition and a lot of times this is hard to do on autofocus because the autofocus wants to grab something that's closer because it's depth aware and so all of a sudden you're focusing on the wrong thing so this is a really cool way and I'm going to show you how you can map it to a function button that make it really useful if you want to do something like subframing and you want to just be able to switch over to that as a mode. Let's talk a little bit about setup on the Fujifilm X-Pro3. Of course what I'm about to show you is pretty much applicable straight across the board on any Fujifilm camera. So if you have an X-T3, an X-T2, an X-Pro2, even an X-E3, this kind of applies to everything. So some of you probably know these settings are here. If you don't then hopefully I'll show you something new. So first of all most of you are aware that Fujifilm has has a very different approach to camera design that deals a lot with knobs and dials and an actual aperture collar that you can turn. This is different than some cameras that deal with the PASM modes on the mode dial. And so if you're in P mode, it's program mode, A is aperture priority, S is shutter priority, M is manual. So the way Fujifilm approached this is that everything has an A setting. I don't know if you can see this on here, there's a little orange A. If everything is in A, we're in program mode, or that's what it would be on a traditional camera. It's as soon as I move the aperture collar over to an f-stop number, I'm now in aperture priority mode. I've just told it, hey, here is the f-stop I want, so adjust everything else to coincide. So I think this is a great way to work. It's a great way to just really get out of manual mode. But what I don't like particularly is in every situation, sometimes reaching for the shutter dial, which is on the top of the camera, is not in the optimal location for me. Same with the exposure compensation. A lot of times if you're focusing and you're actually your attention is in camera and you're shooting, 
to have to say, wait a minute, my shutter speed's too slow and then pick it up. And it's just a second that I want to be able to get to faster. There are two things that you can do to put this onto the dials here, which I think is really interesting. This is actually something that I learned when I was using these cameras to do long exposures. I wanted to do some scenes where I wanted clouds to blow out behind architecture and actually move and have a lot of motion blur. One setting you want to know about is the T setting on the shutter dial. So if you take the shutter dial and you flip this over to T, now I can dial in from the back dial exactly the shutter speed that I want. There's an added bonus to this. I said I was doing long exposures. You can actually dial in specific exposures. A lot of cameras just go from one second up to 30 seconds or they give you a bulb option. This one allows you to actually dial in a 10 minute exposure if that's what you want and it's really useful. But I've actually continued to use this because I can just adjust my shutter speed from the back dial. And if I have motion that I need to freeze and the shutter's not moving fast enough, then I just it's real quick to do. I don't have to go back up to the top dial to do it. I love the top dial if I'm doing studio work, but having the back dial for street is much more useful to me. You can also do this with the exposure compensation dial. Now the exposure compensation dial allows you to under or overexpose if the meter's not quite what you see the scene as. And so basically you just start clicking this and in third of a stop increments, it's going to either go down or up. But you're going to notice that across the dial from zero, you're going to see this letter C. If I flip over to C, for custom exposure compensation. Now, this will map exposure compensation to the front dial. So we have shutter speed on the back, exposure compensation on the front, and I still retain my aperture collar for the actual f-stop. And then we'll talk about ISO in a second, but that is a great way to set it up. So if you wanna quickly move between just being able to underexpose slightly, maybe overexpose slightly and bring out shadow detail, I can adjust my shutter speed and my aperture collar all without leaving my eye. And I think that's really important, especially if you're shooting street photography. So what about ISO? ISO, you may ask, well, you may know that Fujifilm have two different ways you can get to ISO. You can actually dial in the actual ISO number that you want, or there are three auto modes, which will allow the camera to manually select one of them uh, from a specific predefined base ISO to a maximum ISO. So if you feel your camera is a little noisy or a little weirdly contrasty above 800, you can set a limit of 800 and it will just kind of hit that ceiling and everything maybe look a little dark if you need to go past that, but it does allow you to give it a range. I typically keep this on the base ISO of the base ISO of the camera, which is 160, all the way up to 3200. You can set it up to go higher if you want to. It just depends on what you're doing. I typically map that to one of the custom buttons, and I like this one above the Q button here. So just if you're not familiar with where all the custom buttons are on this camera, there are four. You have one here above the shutter compensation dial. On the front of the camera, you actually have one here next to the viewfinder mode selection. On the back, you have one above the queue. This is the one that I will map to select my ISO settings. And then you actually have a fourth with the rear dial. You can press this in, it becomes a button. So there are four custom buttons. You can also do the swipe screens. I think for me on the X Pro 3, this makes less sense because the screen is usually closed. On an X-T3, for instance, you can do a swipe down, swipe right, swipe left, so on and so forth to access more custom functionality. On this camera though, it is closed most of the time. So I rely on the physical buttons much more often. Wait a second, I lied to you. There's actually a fifth function button. You can remap the AEL, AFL. This is autofocus lock, auto exposure lock. You can remap this to something too. And I have, I typically remap this to self timer. If I'm shooting landscapes or if I'm shooting Astro or something and I want the camera to settle down, I will, it's really nice just to be able to pop into that mode. You don't want that on if you're shooting something that's more improvisational or street in nature. So what do I have these mapped to? Well, I just told you what I meant, remapped this one to. On the front of the camera, I'm remapped this first one that's over the viewfinder switch, I remap that to be the autofocus range limit. This is super handy to have and I love that they allow you to map this to a custom function because it's something that I don't want on all the time. I want to be able to turn it on and off really easily. Mapping it to that front button is super easy. The function button on the top of the camera I have remapped to AF mode. So if I want to change my autofocus mode from wide tracking to single point, it's super easy to do. And as many of you know, if you shoot Fujifilm on the front, you have a physical dial that allows you to switch between single, continuous, or manual focus modes. So between having these two dials here, I'm able to change autofocus settings really quickly. And on the back of the camera, I have the function button that's above the quick settings button. I have this mapped to my autofocus settings so I can change those if I need to. And finally, I have the rear dial, which remember you can press in as a custom function button. I have this mapped to autofocus on. There are times when I want the camera to be set up for back button autofocus. I kind of leave that for autofocus on. Most 
most of you know that if you half press the shutter, obviously it's going to acquire focus. You can actually turn that off in the settings. If you click the menu button and you scroll down to the wrench for your user settings, you're going to go to button slash dial setting, go into there and you're going to see if you scroll down shutter autofocus and shutter auto exposure and it gives you different possibilities with both of them. If I go into shutter autofocus, it gives you separate settings for single or continuous autofocus. So if you want to use back button autofocus, for instance, with single acquisition mode, you can go in and turn this off. And what that does is it disables the half press on the shutter and allows you to acquire, acquire focus with another alternative. And so what I do is I map this dial that I can press in to turn the autofocus on. So if you want to use back button autofocus, it's a pretty good way to go. That's just for my hands, the best button you might experiment and you might have these in a completely different order. But I think using these to custom functions that you use quite often will save you a lot of time. And it's actually quicker than the quick settings menu if you have it set up correctly. It's the quicker than quick settings functions. And of course, to assign these, what you're going to do is go into your menu settings. If you go all the way down to the wrench, you're going to go into button slash dial setting. And we're going to select function settings go over there and it's going to give you a little graphical map so you can see exactly where all of these buttons are on your camera. And of course, when you select any one of these, it gives you several pages, in this case, eight of possibilities and functions that you can map to that exact button. This stuff is not exclusive to the X-Pro3. This is applicable to pretty much any of the Fujifilm cameras with the exception of one thing, which is the range limiting function. That's something that as of the time of filming this, at least is only available on the X-Pro3. Hopefully that will come as a firmware update. I don't know how that easy that is to do on something like the X-Pro3. XT3, but you might see it there. I'm working on my review of this camera right now, and I know we have the subjectivity of the flippy screen that people either love or hate. I think beyond that, and of course that's going to come down to personal preference, you're probably either going to love it and find it useful, or you're not going to like it. And the XT3 has some different options. The X-Pro2 is still a legitimate camera. It has some different options. But that aside, I think the image quality has gotten a serious upgrade in the X-Pro3, and it's probably the thing I'm most excited about. When I do my review, it's going to be pretty much primarily focused around that, no pun intended. If there's anything you guys would like to see, this is where I want to hear from you. Drop me a comment below. Until the next video, I'll see you guys then. Later.